Greetings friends, welcome to the Platypus Knitting Channel. My name is Bobby Olan, I use she, her pronouns and I am coming to you from the lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people and I would like to acknowledge them and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. This is episode, I think it is 44 of Bobalog. And this morning, it is a Saturday morning. I have about an hour and a half before I have to head off for work. Um, so I thought I would get set up and get started on applying the three, three ply fractal that I have been doing for Tour de Fleece this year. Um, and I thought I would just jump in quickly and film the little intro for my vlog here as well. So anything that I chat about, I will try to put links for in the YouTube description. If I miss anything, please let me know and I will add those in as well. You can also find me on Instagram at Platypus Knitting. Uh, on Ravelry under my own name, Bobby Olan, and I'm also uh, a member of the Australian Knitters Club on Discord. Uh, I believe I'm also under my own name there, Bobby Olan. So hopefully I'll see you in any of those places. I don't post a lot. I'm more of a lurker on all of the platforms, but I am there and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I am just going to set up my electric eel wheel to do the plying and then I'm gonna get stuck into it. Enjoy! Would you believe I have not touched my Dion pullover since the first week of August. It has been about two, just over two weeks since I worked on it because I was super focused on getting my Tour de Fleece spin finished um, by or during the time that the Tour de Femme was on. I have actually finished it. I forgot to grab it. Give me one sec. 
These are my finished balls here. So this is my three ply fractal spin made from Ixchel Bunny's Shetland Dream in the Ankh Moorpore color. I am so, so happy with how it has turned out. It is just beautiful. The colors come together in such a lovely way. Um, and the having the the three ply fractal um, just allows for so much more color combinations and color variations. So this big main skein here is about 100 grams and I um, did a three ply until one of the singles completely ran out and then I uh, made a plying bracelet out of the biggest single that was remaining and then that combined with the other single. Um, I was again able to make another three ply, just that little bit there, which is 10 grams worth. And the result is uh, a worsted weight yarn, a little on the light side of worsted weight. And I'm super, super happy about that. And then that was about a week ago that the Tour de Femme finished, but since then, I've done bits of sewing, um, I've done a little bit of work on a quilt that I used to have rolled up sitting here on the back of this chair that has just been languishing for such a long time and I've been chipping away at it um, recently and then I also found that there's a show that I like on ABC iview that had put a new season up so I decided I wanted to watch that and I couldn't work on Dion while I was doing that because um, the cables and all of that kind of thing are just a bit too complicated for TV watching. That show by the way is George Clark's Amazing Spaces and I really enjoy watching it. The problem is it always makes me want to find like big DIY projects to do and take up carpentering and I just do not have the time for that but it's I just find it so fun and so inspiring but because I needed an easy project to work on while I was doing that I got a lot of knitting done on my Poka Poka hat that I am knitting for my partner so there it is there it is sitting at about 26 centimeters long so I am ready to do the crown decreases and then I will be starting on the other side. This one is knit in fiddlesticks, let me just get it out here, fiddlesticks socks. There you go and that's just um, what they've got on the label for how it could look knitted up as a sock. Obviously I'm not using it to make a sock um, and I'm, I'm really enjoying how <clears throat> how the colors are coming out. I love that it's um, not completely consistent. I mean, there is a pattern there, but it's not like every set of stripes is exactly the same. So I'm really enjoying that. And I have decided that for when I knit the second half of the hat, I am going to helically I'm going to use helical knitting to knit the rest of this ball here plus also where have I put it this here which I need to unravel which was my first version of the hat that is very much um it was it was way too big it could almost be like the start of a yoke <laughs> which was just ridiculous so I will um just yeah helically knit from the two you know different balls they will end up being and um that will just give a little bit of um variation a little bit of difference to the two ends of the hat so that they're not exactly the same because that's I, I didn't want them to be exactly the same that pattern is from the moon and turtle um book here and i've got it on the back cover there 
And then the other thing is um, I have been really, really terrible about sharing on Instagram um, for it feels like the last year at least, but definitely for this whole year. So I also picked this up from the library um, and I haven't started reading it yet, but hopefully that will help me to um, be a bit better, <laughs> uh, have a bit more of a presence and just get back into the Instagram community. And that that's pretty much where I'm at with my knitting. I need to unravel this and then give it a soak um, just to get the kinks out of the yarn once it has been unraveled and then I will get started well I get started I will get back onto my Dion project which I need to um, get the yarn set up back onto my lazy cake here which I needed to use for plying my yarn and that's that's pretty much where I'm at <laughs> Just outside my friend's house but she's running a little bit late we're going out for yum cha today um, so instead of going in the house I, and waiting for her there I thought I'd take the opportunity to say hello to you guys um, I am just putting on my perfume which is this Lascari number 166 they are a Melbourne based brand I love 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 this scent um, they do this is my favorite scent and it comes in the roll-on. Um, but they do a bunch of solid perfumes as well. And I always thought the name sounded French. So I just assumed it was a French company, but it turns out they're actually Australian. I'm pretty sure they're Melbourne based. And I love this perfume. I get compliments on it whenever I wear it. It just smells delicious. Uh, the ingredients are coconut oil, essential oils, and fragrance. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't help you at all. I wanted to tell you what the scents were, but I cannot remember at all. But there's some kind of spice in it, either like cinnamon or cardamom, cardam cardamom or something. Um, it just smells delicious. And then I'm also putting on my tinted Burt's Bees. Um, yeah, I don't I really don't wear makeup, as you may have noticed watching me. Um, sometimes I'll put it on if I know I'm filming like a proper podcast or something, but sometimes I'm just lazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, today I had a bit of time this morning, so I just put on um, a touch of eyeliner. Um, I kind of just moisturize every day and that's it. Um, my skin has been super dry lately. Anyway, do I have any knitting to share with you? I don't think I do. Part of the reason I'm filming is because I had meant to bring either that book, Show Your Work, or a little knitting project to do in case that I was early. And of course, um, I thought that I was going to be running late. So I ran out the door and forgot to grab either of those things. And now here I am early and what do I have to say? Um, there was something that I was thinking about the other day, a little craft for thought that I just thought I would share. And it was sort of like, I feel like I've been like getting these little insights into myself or something like I'm, I'm, I'm coming to like understand things about myself and what have you. But what was it? it I was thinking about, um, 
why I have been really interested in this new hair care um, I was going to say regime, but that's not a very fun word. Um, this new hair care routine that I've talked about before, um, that's like a medieval hair care practices, but I really more like to think of it as just like a more natural, less washing um, hair care ritual. And the thing is, I have wavy hair. Um, I have a cousin who has gorgeous curly hair and when she started doing the curly girl method oh I just like I wanted to do it I wanted to try to make my hair curly because I just I love I love curls in all their forms I just think they're so beautiful um but I knew that I could never be bothered fully going into the curly girl method because there was just so much involved and then yet with this new hair care practice that I'm doing it is also quite involved. It is allowing me to wash my hair less. I am currently on day one, two, three, four, day five, I think, since I washed my hair and I will actually wash it tonight because I feel like it needs it. I think I can do like one dry shampoo and then I'll need to wash it. The last time I did a dry shampoo and then I tried another dry shampoo and that just didn't work. Um, it was just too long and my hair's not used to it now. So my friend is calling me, so I will have to finish this lot later. Bye. Alrighty. It is now the next day. Um, I had a really lovely day out yesterday with my friends and while I was out with them, one of them actually um, she, she's been around for a few interviews recently and she was telling me that tomorrow the results come out. Um, she's a doctor and she's moved down here from Sydney. Um, so she had to do a bunch of interviews to, you know, try to get work in one of the hospitals here. Um, how does this come out again? And um, while we were out, she wasn't meant to get, she wasn't meant to find out the results until today. Um, but while we were out, she actually got a call from, um, sorry, she actually got a call from the one of the hospitals, which was actually her top preference one, um, to, and, and, she actually got a call from one of the hospitals, which was her top preference, and they were calling to offer her the job um, and were just letting her know a day in advance um, of the results actually being um, published. So that was, that was really, really exciting. I was so happy for her. But anyway, that's not why we're here today. I need to finish my thought from yesterday. So let me see if I can do that more succinctly and just get to the point basically what i was trying to say was that um i love curly hair i really love curly hair and i wish that i had curly hair um and i was i'm really i was really interested in the curly girl method especially after my cousin started doing it because she just has amazing curly hair um and it was like working really well for her, obviously, but I could not be bothered um, <laughs> with, with doing all of the things that the curly girl method requires. I sort of like vaguely um, tried just like a couple of things, things like plopping my hair and using a diffuser um, to dry it. Um, so just really like minor things like that. Oh, bloody hell. There we go. Um, so I, I just, I wasn't interested in committing to like the full sort of, um, the full curly girl practice. Cause in my mind for me, um, it was just too much. But the other day, um, I was combing my hair following, you know, like the advice from 
um, Kathleen sewing like I've been talking about and I realized it was taking me like um, like 20 to 30 minutes to comb my hair each night that I was doing it and I'm not doing it every night but um, still like that's a lot of time and I was sort of thinking through well why am I more willing like to do this which um, you know required me to buy like a few new things and to spend like all of this time um, doing it but I like I wasn't wanting to do it for Curly Girl um, and I sort of had the thought that I don't think I like when um, what am I trying to say <laughs> like if if something requires like lots of smaller steps to get things done I'm not as interested in doing it as I am when it's something that like you need to put a lot more, um, I'm just moving the chair to support my fabric hanging off the end of the table so it doesn't slip down. Um, if something like will take longer but requires like a more, more dedicated time frame to do like one thing, I seem to enjoy that better. And I found that really interesting because I realized that not only does it apply to this sort of hair care thing that I'm doing, but it also kind of applies to my crafting life. So, you know, for example, I love knitting, obviously. I, um, I really, really love knitting, which is, yeah, very obvious. And um, I have dabbled in sewing for example which is what I am setting up now I'm setting up to cut some pattern pieces for a sewing project um, but I have to really be in the mood for sewing to get into it and sometimes I definitely just like sort of rush through a sewing project and don't do it properly and I'm thinking that probably it's because it does involve like a lot of smaller steps to do it and I like being able to like just focus on one thing which is probably why knitting appeals to me so much more um, because I can really just like sit down and get into a zone and just like do it and that's the same thing with spinning actually and spinning I find easier to get into a flow than I do with sewing um, because it sort of provides that even more knitting usually still needs like a bit more concentration than sewing uh, than spinning will for me so yeah I just thought that was like a fun interesting little insight into like the way that I guess I think about things um, and like the things that I like to do and why I like to do them so I just thought that I would share that with you as a little craft for thought um yeah I might mention just quickly as well so with this pattern that I'm making um, I asked my cousin who um, studied fashion at one point in her life um, like her you know for, for I asked her for tips on um, tracing sewing patterns onto fabric and she was just like I wouldn't trace it I would just pin it onto the fabric and cut it out so I'm trying that and seeing um, how I go it's not the way that I have done things before but we shall see how it goes and I probably could have used a lot more pins on this but so far you know so good that I'm starting with like a really easy piece here um, 
one concern that I have is, um, no, actually, that's not a concern. Um, one thing is that, well, th this piece won't actually show it clearly, but she was saying to Jess, like, where there are notches and things in the pattern, um, just to, like, snip them into the seam allowance. So I'm either going to do that or I'm just going to draw them in into the seam allowance. Um, so we'll see what um, feels right when I get up to a pattern piece that has those. I mean, this kind of has it, so. So there's like this, whoops, a line down here that I need to transfer to the same allowance. I think actually I will just pencil it in. probably really shouldn't be using a pencil to do that but this is kind of just a um, test run of this sewing pattern <laughs> so I don't mind having like marks and things on it and I have put them on the wrong side so we'll just see how this goes I guess I should just leave you there that was all I had to say I've just finished all of the decreases for the waist and it is pretty much perfect where it is sitting. Um, so my waist kind of starts coming out just a little bit below where it is, which is perfect because I do need to knit a little bit straight down before I start doing the increases for the hips. And I'm, I'm so, so happy with how that is fitting. There's a weird lump here because is this ball, that's better. Excited. I got some happy mail today from 111 Windmills, so I wanted to share that with you because I'm very, very excited for this. Um, Lisa from 111 Windmills, who is my favorite Aussie maker, uh, posted a little while ago about a new um, product range she was doing, and which, was, which also involved a collaboration. Sorry for all that noise. Um, and the uh, hint for it, um, basically it's the theme is uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I am a big fan of. So of course I had to get it and I had to get everything. So 
<laughs> oh, this is so brilliant. The, she always has a little note in her packages and this one says, thank you for all the fish, which is just absolutely perfect for this theme. Um, if you don't know Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, then you probably, you wouldn't get it, but it's, it's just perfect. I love it. Um, some French Earl Grey tea here as well from Tea Tonic. And there's going to be a bit of rustling, so I'm going to stop talking while I unwrap this beautiful package. All right, so the, that first thing that fell out was the thing that I was looking forward to most in this package, which is this uh, book here that says, Don't Panic. It is a yarn cutter, and I love the... Uh, the yarn cutter that I had gotten from Lisa before. Um, I've actually been using it with my sewing, but it does say yarn lover, so I'd love to keep this one for knitting projects. And maybe this don't panic one is the one that I can use for my sewing, but um, it's, <laughs> it's just so perfect. I love it so much. Um, it, it's amazing. I just, it's brilliant. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> So we have here some stitch markers. Um, so a dolphin, a babble fish, and 42, which is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. What else have we got? <laughs> um, uh, this is a little stitch holder. It's got three holes at the bottom that you can hang those three stitch markers from. Um, but it is the world which says mostly harmless because that was um, the entry for most of the book. For most of the book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In the book, the entry for Earth was, it was harmless and then it was updated to be mostly harmless. So, love it. Perfect. Gotta have your towel. I love this little pouch that is made out of toweling material, but inside it's lined really nicely with a couple of pockets, which is just excellent. Brilliant. Love it. I love that there's a 42 on the tag there as well. Just ties everything in nicely, but yes. It's a massively useful pouch. And last but not least, the uh, sock set from Ash and Eve, which is uh, 75.25 merino and nylon. So I don't know that I'll actually use them together because I have a plan for some, I have a project in mind for some minis, but it doesn't, it isn't really relevant yet. But anyway, um, so this main skein is called Mostly Harmless and then the mini skein is Double Fish. So I don't know, maybe I will use them together because they do look quite nice, but I may commandeer that for another project. Anyway, I just thought I would jump in here and share that with you because I was really, really excited to get it. Thank you so much, Lisa. Love it. Everything is brilliant and amazing. As always, thank you so, so much. Yeah. <laughs> I have been slowly putting together this quilt top that I started I don't even know how long ago and I find that whenever I work on it I get so easily distracted by I don't even know what and I'm kind of realizing why 
I mean, it's something that I've known all along, but every time I work on this, I'm reminded of um, how important it is to measure right from the beginning. Because I didn't. <laughs> I was like, really like rough with, um, yeah, with, with my measurements and I just didn't do it properly. And it's made like every following step of the process harder to follow. Um, I mean, I'm not like super fussed about it because this is my first quilt. I did another like little quilt cushion that I just like super duper rushed. And you'd think that from that one, I would have learned how important measuring is because I didn't do it then either. Um, but no, <laughs> and here I am again. And also I think another issue is that I picked a sort of more complicated pattern, mainly because I saw a video on YouTube that I'll link below that just like made it so easy. It like simplified like this tumbling blocks design so much that I just jumped in head first, like, oh, that looks like a breeze, like I should be able to handle that. And it, it would have been perfectly fine if I had measured properly. But let's see if I can show you um, some of the bits that aren't so good and some of the bits that are. That's a good one there. Not aligned. Not aligned. Not aligned. I mean, I still think, I still think when it's like put together and completely done that it'll work because who's going to look at it that closely? And I do think it looks good. <clears throat> um, I did also make this out of Oops, you fell over. <laughs> Let me try that again, shall I? Um, I was saying that I had, that the fabric that I've used for this, all of the printed fabric is quilting fabric that I'd got as like super cheap on sale, little fat quarter bundles from Spotlight. Um, and they had just been like sitting in my cupboard for so long. So I kind of used this quilt as an opportunity to like use a bunch of them up because I didn't know what I was going to use them for. I think this florally one here is actually just um, not quilting fabric because it, uh, it might be actually. The, the plain fabric is like a cotton, I think it's a cotton poplin and it's a lot lighter um, than the quilting fabric. So um, there are going to be some areas where you're going to see like the seam folded back underneath it because it is so light. But, you know, again, I'm not super fussed. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this? Yeah, I mean, again, because I was just, I'm just making this out of scrap. I, I sort of just, you know, selected my colors that I wanted, made all of the pieces, laid them out in whatever configuration I could, which is why um, the edges, some of them have these, this blue and this spotted fabric that aren't really anywhere else but they're not like even. So on this edge here, 
I have one strip that's um, spots and geometric and then the next strip is geometric and floral or and uh, this viney one but on the other side of the quilt which you can't see it is two strips of spots and geometric and then one strip of spots mixed with some of this other fabric and then um, in this corner there's a little bit more of the geometric fabric and in the opposite corner there's a bit more so it's like the two corners um, the two opposite corners have that and then this top edge has none of the blue and spots but this top edge is completely blue and spots just because that's how I could sort of like lay it out in a way that made some kind of sense but then also the thing that I'm going to have to do or well I'm considering doing because this is actually going to end up being quite small it's probably going to be like a meter by a meter and what use is that going to be to anyone so I may have to add um, some sashing strips just along like the ends maybe just so that it can be a little bit like wider so this length I'll probably keep the same and I'll turn it around this way onto my batting here um, and just make it wider that way because I'm sure I still have more of these leftover uh, fat quarters. So we'll see how I go there. I am enjoying it. I It's like making me want to do a quilt properly when I'm finished this. So this there's so many there's so many projects I want to do so we'll just see how I go.